Thank you all. What we have here are candidates for position five of Linwood City Council. Thank you all for being here. We're going to be starting with a statement, Miss uh, Altamarina, it's my glasses, Altamirano Crosby has sent someone on her behalf. She will be reading a statement. Um, she won't be answering questions, so I'm going to begin with her reading her statement. Thank you. Shandeno, buenas tardes, good evening. My name is Griselda Guevara Cruz, and I'm here on behalf of Julieta Altamirano Crosby. Julieta regrets that she is not able to attend tonight's forum. Tonight she is attending a prior commitment, a meeting for the planning of the 2019 People of Color Legislative Summit as a member of the steering committee, a position she was invited by Senator Bob Hasegawa. The People of Color Legislative Summit is a Washington statewide event that gathers community leaders from advocacy groups, community organizations, and government entities to share their priority issues and find common issues to work in the next legislative session. Building relationships and finding regional solutions is Julieta's strength. She is running for city council because she, the challenges facing Linwood cannot be solved by the city by itself. We need a regional support in working relationships with county, state, and neighboring cities. Julieta has built successful relationships on all levels through her work as a research and community advocate. She works in Sohomish County with law enforcement to reduce youth crime, and she currently serves on the Washington State Educational Opportunity Gap Oversight and Accountability Committee. She also is on the Washington State Commission on Hispanic Affairs and the Humanities Washington Board of Trustees. Julieta has a doctoral degree in social communications, a Master of Education in Educational Leadership from Seattle Pacific University, a Master of Communication Science and a Certificate in Race Equity and Leadership in Schools from Harvard University. Now, she wants to take the skills she has learned to academically and professionally to keep to keep Linwood a thriving community. The challenges facing Linwood today point to one thing, growth. Preparing for change is Julieta's field of expertise as a researcher. She knows how to listen and understand people's concerns, which allows her to put together a plan to address everyone's concerns. With a long track record of leading successful collaborations between community members and government projects, she would be honored if the people of Linwood chose her to serve them. To learn more about Julieta, please visit her website at www.crosbyforcommunity.com or feel free to ask her yourself by attending happy hours with Julieta. To meet her, this... And you can go ahead and just step down and we appreciate you being here very much. So there was a random draw to see who um, will answer the first question here for position five, Dr. Shirley, you won the draw. So I'm going to ask you the first question, and as we did, say again. Oh, do we do that too? <laughs> okay, we're gonna, <laughs> look, you, you try this, you know? Um, anyway, we're gonna begin with opening statements. Dr. Shirley, would you please give us your two minute opening statement? Oh, thank you very much. Um, my name is Dr. David Shirley. First, I wanna thank the uh, Chamber of Commerce for inviting us and for holding this event. These are important to our democracy our republic and form of government. Uh, second, uh, I'd like to thank the voters who are here for being involved. Uh, it takes candidates to run. Uh, they have a desire to be involved. You have a desire to be involved and I really appreciate that. Um, I've lived in uh, Linwood for about 10 years. Prior to that, we lived about 17 years or so in, in Seattle. We chose to live in Linwood. Linwood has a feel to it. It feels rural, even though there's an awful lot of concrete here and a lot of buildings, but it still feels as a rural feel. But we all know that things are changing. Uh, and we see that with maybe with some, you know, some apprehensions. Um, like I I, I'm running because I'd like to take the, the experiences I've had in, in my life, uh, both in the, the military where I retired after 35 years, in my medical profession, uh, in, in problem solving um, and in owning my own business. I'd like to take those and apply those to the problems that I see that we're facing here in Linwood. The problems are the taxes, they keep going up. We know it. Uh, the next problem is we're gonna have another 12 to 15,000 people living here and we have to plan for that. And that's a, and that's a very complex operation. 
And the, se and the last one is um, people living on the street. You notice I didn't say homeless because your word's been misused. Um, I'm thank, um, thank the Lord. Uh, I'm going to run out of time here. Um, I'll, go <clears throat> I'll go into that in my closing statement. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Graziani, may we have your two-minute opening statement, please? Okay, my name is Rosa Maria Graziani, and I've lived in Linwood for 14 years. I am not a politician. I am an educator. I taught at the University of Texas and, the, and Yale University. For the last 10 years, I've taught for free at the library and other local nonprofits. As president of the Latino Academy, I devote between 30 to 40 hours a week to my community, and because of this close contact, I see them struggling financially. They are fully employed, but it's not enough. Several of my young students cried for hours when they learned that they had to move because their family could not afford to rent in Linwood. They, um, they were devastated because they had to leave many relatives and friends behind. It is incomprehensible to me that despite the windfall of revenues from property taxes, the majority in the council still wants to tax us more. Fixed income and middle class neighbors are being priced out of our city, and I pledge to fix that. If you vote for me and like-minded candidates, I will lower your taxes and utilities and, and, and provide affordable housing in Linwood. Thank you. Thank you. First question to you, Dr. Shirley. If you received a $1 million grant to use for the city in any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? Well, first, first off, grants usually come with strings, but if this one didn't come with strings attached and we could do anything we want with it, uh, I would believe that uh, uh, we should uh, try to uh, lower the sales tax or other taxes here and the burden on our community, uh, especially the uh, senior citizens who are being priced out of their houses by these increased taxes. So. Um, I would put it towards that, uh, towards lowering taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Graziani, what do you believe to be the top three pressing concerns to businesses in Linwood? Well, the, the first concern is the extremely high sales, sales tax, especially for big ticket items like the dealers. Uh, many people are choosing to buy in Everett or, you know, or, or Shoreline just because you know, for a, a, a twenty thousand dollar car, that's a, that's we know one thousand dollars less. So that's one thing. And secondly, is uh, the, that they feel that the residents do not have enough disposable income. They are being s squeezed dry by local taxes and and high rents. So um, that's a concern for them. That's why there are so many empty storefronts. They don't have enough customers. And also the problem of homelessness. Um, uh, you know, having homeless people around sometimes uh, deters people from entering their, their storefronts. So those are the three concerns. Thank you very much. Dr. Shirley, do you feel there is waste in the city budget? If so, Please cite specific areas where you would reduce funding. Well, thank you for the uh, question. Uh, if everybody can hear me. Um, I'm looking at page uh, 71 of the budget for 2019-2020. And I note here that uh, in 2016, salaries and wages was, excuse me, was $28,440,000. And it's gone up to in 2019-2020 to 51 million dollars that's 22 million dollar gain uh that's uh, a lot of new employees or at least they would appear to be um i'm not sitting on the city council so i'm not able to ask questions of specifics for that but as a taxpayer i'm looking at that and saying i think we can cut there thank you thank you miss graziani how do you propose to address mental health issues in linwood well, that question is directly related to uh, homeless people in our city. And we have to remember that many of them are veterans and they deserve our utmost respect. Uh, I propose to hire a full-time social worker. Now we have a, only a part-time social worker. So, um, uh, because most of them already qualify for Medicaid and veterans care, but they need support with paperwork, co-pays and, and transportation and, and that sort of things. 
So um, the, the social worker will really help them access those services. Also, um, I propose uh, having uh, urban rest stops um, for, um, that provide um, storage, um, mail service, uh, and showers. Um, so they can, uh, the, the social worker can be based there and provide them with these services because the problem is that these are transient. So these urban rest stops will gather them in one place and we will be able to help them in a better way. Thank you. Dr. Shirley, what do you believe to be the top three pressing concerns to businesses in Linwood? Yeah, I'm uh, talking with uh, people out there and, uh, and businesses. I believe the top uh, three concerns are the uh, tax, uh, both sales, which are going to drive customers, are driving customers away here. We have 10.5 sales tax. Um, that's a, more than any other area. Um, they also play, pay property taxes. They have gone up. Um, and I'm and they're very concerned about the traffic and being able to get around uh, Seattle, excuse me, get around Linwood, or not Seattle, thank you, uh, get around Linwood uh, and the congestion, which drives customers away. So all the businesses here want to be able to have a good flow of traffic and reasonable taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Graziani, if you received a $1 million grant to use for the city in any way you wanted, what would you do with it and why? Okay, first, um, I would love to, um, the city to have more indoor playgrounds. Um, I think it's very, um, there are very, very uh, easy, easy ways to do that. We can empty some of the shelters that are not used in the winter and put playgrounds there because the, uh, many of, of the low-income children that live in apartment complexes without places to play, they are really, uh, they have to stay in their really small apartments. And um, I would also provide scholarships for low-income children for the camps. Now, uh, um, there's only $200 available per kid, and summer camp is over $1,000. So literally no low-income children can attend those summer camps. And this is especially important because uh, these children are usually left alone in their apartments because their parents work even Saturdays and Sundays. You have to remember that many low-income families, uh, uh, their parents work in restaurants and construction and landscaping, and these kids really need uh, Thank you. more supervision. Thank you very much. Dr. Shirley, how do you propose to address mental health issues in Linwood? I get a minute. Um, wow. Uh, as a doctor, I had an office practice at Broadway, and I would say probably 20% of my patients had mental health problems, so I'm very familiar with this. Um, the state of Washington actually has failed people with mental health problems in this, in this regard. Um, they've mainstreamed people with mental health problems and got them apartments and uh, care uh, and uh, social workers and their, on their medications. But the people we failed are the people who have mental health problems and uh, who then end up on the street and uh, are not taking their meds and are having either problems themselves, being targets of problems, or our problems to our, our residents and our citizens. Um, I, the city of uh, C. Linwood cannot do anything about this itself. Uh, we need to work with the county and the state on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Graziani, do you feel there is waste in the city budget? If so, please cite specific areas where you would reduce funding. There is a lot of waste. Um, the previous mayor had $15,000 in the biennial budget for his executive budget. The present mayor has 240000 Basically, the previous mayor, 500 a, a month. The, the present mayor, $10,000 a month. And she buys staff lunches and a trip to Korea. I think that is wasteful. And also, I don't know if you know, but many of our directors earn more than $180,000 salaries. And that is much more than they earn in neighboring cities. So I think I think uh, we are uh, we can get um, good professionals for less money. And I also think that uh, these donations to nonprofits like the Rotary and international uh, national nonprofits should be done with the mayor's money, not with the taxpayer money. So there's a lot of waste, and I intend to end that. Thank you very much. We are now to the closing statements. I know that went by fast, didn't it? 
Uh, because Dr. Shirley, you started with the opening statement, I'm going to ask Ms. Graziani to give us her closing statement first, and this is one minute. Okay, the main concern for residents in Linwood is affordable housing. Uh, there are two times more renters than homeowners. We need to change the city's comprehensive plan to include the affordable housing component. Then the city can provide incentives to offer Section 8. We should make our utmost to relieve the economic burden on our low-income residents, lowering utilities and taxes for them, so they have disposable money to spend. Local money goes around five times in the local economy, and it generates new jobs. We should promote community building and resident engagement by providing more services. A vibrant city full of proud residents attracts business and prosperity. We have to remember that the present majority and the mayor in the council are very much responsible for the high cost of living in Linwood. And the candidates endorsed by the mayor have pledged to continue doing more of the same. We should vote and say enough is enough. We have the power to elect a city council that cares for the residents and not the corporations. Thank you very much. Dr. Shirley, your one minute closing statement, please. Um, I've been out actively canvassing and I've talked to uh, uh, now hundreds of, of voters. One of the things I keep hearing over and over again is that we don't matter. We don't matter. If we go to city council meeting or if we try to get a permit, or we try to get a pothole fixed, or we try to get the tree cut. Uh, all I have to say is, if you elect me, you will matter. I will listen to you. I will try to act. Uh, obviously, I have to do that with the rest of the city council, but I will do what I can to make sure that the people of the city of uh, Linwood matter. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank the position five candidates for being here tonight. Thank you for your thoughtful answers. We're going to excuse them. Let's give them a hand for being here.